Hello and welcome back to Rara's Adventures. Today we are doing an interview and today we are with <laughs> Mandy Duffin who is a little silly as you can tell. <laughs> Mandy Duffin is my mother. It's taken us about 20 minutes to get this far so please bear with us. Um, so this interview is to share with different conditions <laughs> that people suffer with and maybe help other people recognise a condition or offer different things that may help aid them to do things more easily kind of thing yes <laughs> something like that okay we'll just get on with it shall we yes. so we are going to go through 11 questions and Maddie is going to answer them as best as she can and hopefully with as least giggles as possible maybe hopefully so hello welcome to our Ra's adventures thank you for joining us you're welcome i think yes we can be louder you're welcome i think <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome <sighs> so what conditions do you have well i was first diagnosed with osteoarthritis in my knees so they replaced half of them which were rubbish and took ages to get over and didn't last even a year so then i had to wait a further three years to get complete knees which are great do you know why they didn't do complete knees in the first round? Because they said that the other side was only a little bit worn, so they didn't need to do it. But obviously when I had the half knee done... That's when they found out? Well, no. It, oh. it was just the fact that over that six, eight months, um, the other side of each knee had deteriorated, so it didn't work. Oh. So three years later, I had to have full knees, had to wait for three years until I could hardly walk. And then they let you have new knees, which are brilliant. So I had an MRI, so I already knew that I'd got it everywhere, right. literally head to toe. Um, but by the time they did my knees, mm -hmm. I then started having trouble what, with what I thought was my hips. So they did another x-ray. I know my hips are not too bad at the moment, but my back has got it now. Um, my hands are awful. My right ankle's now awful. So what other um, conditions do you Five have? Five elder on top of it, which is what that they originally... Help, it? No, it doesn't. That's originally what they said I'd got, but it wasn't. It was arthritis creeping. Mm. So you haven't got... Yeah, I've got both. Oh, you've got both. Yeah. You're very lucky. lucky yes. <laughs> yeah. Buy one, get one free. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. Um, do you have any other conditions? Is that not enough? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's about sharing your conditions. Um, do you have asthma? Yes, I've got asthma. Yeah. Um, not too badly. If I lost yeah. weight, that would definitely help with that. Uh, I had to have my thyroid removed, so I have to have medication for that. Um, I've had a full hysterectomy as well. Yeah, oh yes, had that as well. Gold bladder out. Yes, and that. Quite a bit, Shall really. I list your conditions? <laughs> it's about 17 surgeries I've been through now. Wow. Yes, and most of those are major. All apart from one which was for a broken nose and... <laughs> That was probably the most painful. That wasn't me, part of the wind. <laughs> that was, that the, was dogs the dog down below. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, yeah, quite a lot. Okay. Um, so, when was your first condition or conditions diagnosed, if you can remember, or roughly? Well, I know I had my half knees done in 2015, so it would have been at least three years yeah. prior to that, so um, that's of the arthritis, fibromyalgia they said I had in my hands a long time ago, I don't know, um, maybe 
2002, somewhere like that. Long time, but not as debilitating as it is now, just causing pain. Yeah. Sort of thing, but on and off. Mm -hmm. uh, I had that, what I thought, in my neck and my shoulders, but that actually is arthritis, but I don't know, maybe you get fibromyalgia there as well, I don't know, really. Fibromyalgia goes wherever Everywhere. it wants to yeah, go, doesn't seems it? Seems to, yeah. And even in my feet, mm. arthritis and fibromyalgia probably. Yeah. Okay. Um, how does your condition or conditions affect you mentally and physically? Mentally, when I'm really bad. To be honest, I don't want to be here. No. Because I just can't stand it. I yeah. just want to cut my hands off. Um, I had to have jaw replaced um, just a couple of years ago now because uh, that was causing so much eating problems and I used to choke a lot as well Yeah. because I couldn't chew food properly so I just used to swallow it and then choke on it and everything so I've had a new jaw done but ever since then I've had nerve pain in my face which they're saying could also be fibromyalgia as well Right. So I'm stuck with that apparently. Um, but joy of joys, the other side's having a quick go now. It's having a. So do you think I have to have a heart surgery? Well, more than likely eventually, but I should wait until I'm having to suck stuff through a straw. I'm not rushing. No. Because I've had enough really. So I, I, I mean, I can't eat anything <coughs> hard anyway, like nuts and things like that. Can't no. bite into an apple or anything like that. No. Um, and your hands, how do you find using your hands? My hands, I could quite happily just cut off most days because, I mean, all night long, you, I try and keep my hands, I go just do it like this. Yeah. And your dad's always saying you can't get near because your hands are on your face virtually. Yeah. I, I leave them there because they're safe. Um, so I, I've got gloves that I wear for them. Um, pressure gloves is it? Yeah. Which are actually in the dryer at the moment. A, unfortunately you have to wash them sometimes. Yeah. And um, I've got all sorts of gadgets now. I've got this one which is excellent for opening cans with ease. Yeah. Um, bottle opener which don't really use that much. Uh, this bit is to open jars but I haven't got the grip to do that so I use one of these instead. Oh you find that easier? Well, I do, but even then, she still have to have a certain amount of grip, and I don't have it, so I either have to wait until your dad gets home, or if he's already home, then he'll do it anyway. So yeah. And for writing, I found this pen, which is fantastic, and I think it's for kids. It's meant to improve your handwriting, but for me, oh dear, it's got the little screw top lid, and then it, it's. I don't know if you can see, but it, it's um. It's shaped and it's like a rubber and, oh, it's, wow. and it's thicker so and you don't have to press hard you can just hold it really lightly yeah I still can't write for long but I can write whereas before my hands just used to slip down to the yeah. tip like that and then I can't <clears throat> write anything that is brilliant I think it was about seven seven pound fifty from WH <coughs> so I got that oh, but wow. they did have, I think it was in the sale mm. as well but um, it's brilliant, I only found it a couple of weeks ago. So now I'm finding for my mental health, Yeah. Uh, although I haven't been able to do it for the last couple of days because my hands have just been so bad I couldn't even hold a pen. Yeah. Um, but I've been finding that writing my thoughts down every day, so I'm usually two or three times a day because I can't write for long. Yeah. Um, it's, it's helping with my mental health as well. I find writing really helpful mm. in that. Awesome. It worries me, as my hands get worse, I'm not going to be able to do it. Because no. the actual writing it is what but then helps me. There's, there's other programs, isn't there, like on your phone and on your laptop that you can I know you can speak, speak it, yeah. but don't you find it therapeutic to actually, to actually write, write it? Yeah, because yeah, I do. I do, yeah. Yeah, so I'm trying not to think about that, but it's going to come where I... I mean, I've had... All day yesterday I couldn't write at all. No. And this morning I've actually had to take pain relief, which I try not to take. 
I am on medication, but the actual pain, you know, like a code and all that. I try not to take them because they don't actually work no. when you're taking them all the time. Whereas if you just take them every now and again, it does take the edge off better than if you take them all the time. So no. I'm just doing that now. But um, oh, I think being all, the, all this pain it just makes your life miserable. It certainly happens. does, and especially in lockdown. Well, yeah. And the winter. Mm. I hate Miserable. winter. Yeah. I hate it. If it's windy, I can't stand going out. It hurts my face for a start. Yeah. And then if I do go out in it, if I do brave it, then I end up just, oh, I'm so miserable. Mm. Going oh. back to AIDS, um, in the background, you can probably hear a lot of banging. Um, Mum's yes. having a ramp put in to help as she struggles with the steps. I fall up them, basically. <clears throat> Yeah, like bring the washing in. So we apologise for the background noise. Um, That'll help. But also, you found that you, because you like to walk the dogs, so you've bought a ramp for the car. I have because one of my dogs can't, shouldn't be getting in and out because he's got to have new hips eventually. Yeah. So you end up having to kind of put his front legs up and lift his back legs. Well, he's 26, nearly 27 kilograms, mm. and. It kills me, which is why my hands were so bad yesterday. Yeah. Um, so, but it, um, Tara's going to help me, aren't you? I am. Train him to walk up and down it because he's quite a nervy boy. Mm. And because it hasn't got like high sides on it, he probably thinks he's going to fall off. So we've got to coax him up. And if just one person's doing it, he just backs off. So I need two people, one to coax, one to push. <laughs> yeah. Basically. So we've got to get him so as he'll do it, otherwise I can't even walk them. Yeah. I can't walk them from home anyway because I can't hold the other one on a lead because he hurts my hands and I'll just let go. Yeah. I can't do it. And we're also going to do a review on the ramps as well. Yeah. And Mum will be in that um demonstrating it. Um, which will be fun, so watch out for that, that'll be coming out soon. Yes, you'll see me, don't worry. <laughs> so, let's go back to the questions. Um, have you found, or what have you found, um, support-wise? Have you found any groups, any social networking, anything that has helped you, any apps that have helped you, meditation, anything? When I had my knees done the first time, I yeah. did go on to the um, patient helpline, uh, not helpline, but uh, forum. Yeah. And I did speak to quite a few people with arthritis, and um, also I used to play Scrabble online, and I used to talk to people as well. Oh, right. Whilst playing the game, but I don't do it anymore. I sort of grew out of it, I think. <laughs> I just didn't go back to it, I don't know why. Such a gap between my first knees and my second knees that um, I sort of forgot really. Mm. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm not very, um, I mean I talk to you girls. Yeah. Well I moan mainly. I yes. moan a lot. A bit, isn't it? Um, I think it's good to have family and friends. You need somebody to get it out of your yeah. system, don't you, sometimes. I need to lose weight because I've gained so much weight, not only during lockdown, but since I've had my last knees done, where I've got so low, I'm I think comfort eating all the time. struggled with that, yeah. definitely. But I've got to get it off because I know it's not helping my ankle, I know it's not helping my back. Yeah. Um, I can't believe how much weight I've gained. I'm the heaviest I've ever been in my life even when I was pregnant. But the circumstances do well, not help sick. at all, do they? No, they don't. They don't. No. And it, although you know you're not doing yourself any favours, it's still... I mean, if it was life-threatening, I like to think I would stop eating <laughs> as much. But I'm not so sure. I'd probably no. just carry on, to be honest. Because I'm just... That's what I do. I just sort of get myself in a pit. Yeah, and you can't climb out. No. Yeah. No, I think there's loads of us like this. Absolutely. Everywhere. Mm. What are your managing tips for other people like yourself? Um, 
So like writing, that helps? Well, yes, that right, helps. writing, that helps um, get it off your chest a bit. Get as many appliances as you can. Um, what but, different aids that all help support you? Yes, that make yeah. life a bit easier. Try and keep walking if you can, mm. because exercise releases endorphins, which helps with your mental health. Yeah. Um, so I do try and walk as much as I can. And would you say communication? Don't shut yourself away and make sure you talk to people. Well, yeah, you do need to be talking to people. Um, Sometimes you feel like the, um, I mean, I'm waiting for appointments to be seen about all of this, you know, because there might be injections or something I can have in my hands. And it's like, oh, she's got osteo, mm, can't do anything about that. Mm. And you feel like they've given up on you. Yeah. You must feel the same. I do very much, yeah. Mm. And I think we all do, especially at the moment, because everything's on a go slow. Yeah. But it's not helping at the moment because we can't see our, you know, I know I'm seeing you now, but I'm in your bubble, but um, we can't get together properly, no. you know, and have little barbecues or, it's so boring. It is it? very, boredom is horrible, absolutely. Yeah. This is a highlight having you here today. <laughs> <laughs> um, do's and don'ts for people who don't know or understand your condition. Well, this is it. I mean, I've got a disabled badge, so when I take the dog out, I can park in disabled bay. But I'm sure some people think, well, she doesn't need to be in that bay. Mm. By the time if they see me when I come back to the car, they'll notice that I have to sit down. I get in really slowly because my back's killing me by then. I have to sit down and just sit there for a minute. So maybe people say it's like judgmental. No, they shouldn't. You know, just because you you haven't got plasters on or you know a leg missing or anything like that. So invisible. <laughs> yeah, or even even with your mental state. You know, mm. I mean, I've been on walks where I've been crying half the time I've walked around. Yeah. And people ignore you, quite frankly, which is probably a good thing because I probably don't want to be noticed. But um, <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's it's like um. I think with the mental health side of things, a lot of people, well they shouldn't now because there's so much of it about with lockdown and everything, but um, a lot of people shy away from it because they don't know how to deal with it. Yeah. Um, I was going to say we're quite fortunate in this family, but I don't think we are, but most of us suffer with our mental health, don't we? I think a lot of people in the world do. Mm, I do too, yeah. Very depressing, mm. but we do have a giggle, don't we? Yeah sometimes absolutely um what is your personal advice for people who have or think they may have a condition or they might know someone who may have a similar condition to yours well they need to get diagnosed and then take it from there but i mean if you can have a joint replaced uh well don't rush in but um get it done because I mean it's made the world of difference with my knees it's just unfortunate that I've now got it in the ankle and back but um, up until then it was so nice to be able to walk around but I'd already got it in my hands anyway so was there any warning signs before you got really really bad was well I mean when you kids were younger you know when you got a young family you're lugging your kids about and you doing 30 jobs and all the rest of it yeah. you don't think about yourself no. so if you've got a back problem or anything like that you just carry on yeah well even my surgeons have said to me what I should have done is gone to the doctors and then they might have done x-rays and said what well, you are going to be susceptible to osteo because apparently it's in my genes as so well. is there a so blood test they can do when don't you're young to tell this? I'm not, I'm not sure whether no. there is for rheumatoid, but I'm, right. I don't think it really shows up in um, osteo, but x-rays would show up. Right. You know, with my jaw and that, I should have had an x-ray on that years ago. Yeah. And then I wouldn't have talked so much and worn it out too quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's part of a fun though, is it not? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I should have gone to the doctors years ago. Yeah. And 
well, I did go to the doctors years ago about my hands, mm. and they did x-rays and actually said they couldn't see anything wrong. So that must have been, I reckon, fibromyalgia. Oh, right, yeah. And maybe it develops, I don't know. But no. I've got both now, so. Mm. They're very debilitating, debilitating even, yeah. to get anything like this. And, you know, you, you just think you're, Oh good, I've had that done, now I can get on and be a bit normal. And then get hit with something else. You do. It's like a chain reaction. All the time. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> okay, um, what would help you more manage your condition better? Well, I'm having a ramp put in, yeah. as you know. Um, and you've got the ramp for the car. Yes, I've got the ramp for the... Uh, just got to get the dog so it'll go up and down that. So yeah. and it's not too heavy, so it's far easier to get that out a couple of times than it will to pick him up. Yeah. Um, and then I've got like these little gadgets <coughs> that I've already shown you. Yeah. And my pen and everything. So, I mean, it's anything. I've got saucepans with two handles, one either side. Yeah. And one's got a long handle, so you can support it under your elbow as well. That's a good idea. Well, I can't actually strain anything now, and uh, I try not to do much chopping because I end up in A&E. Yes. Yes, you took your little finger off, did you? I did the top of it. Yeah. Um, so, helps if you've got somebody else around that can help you with that. Mm. Um, okay. Um, what would you like to see happen in the coming years for more support and help related relating to your condition? I think there needs to be advice out there to, I was going to say to guide people in, in, you know, nutritional side of things, you know, because certain foods can make osteo worse. Oh, right. But, would you listen? I mean, when I was in my 20s, I would have said, you know, I'll eat what I want, thank you. Mm. And I think we're all the same. It's not until yeah. you get older. I mean, look at me now, I'm eating rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Hence, gain so much weight. Yeah. So, I don't think you're going to listen, to be honest, are you? No. It's one of those things, we've just got to learn that things will change eventually, somehow. Mm. Or they might find something that can strengthen your bones, or... Yeah. I don't know. How does your condition or conditions make you feel about yourself? Well, I get very low. My self-esteem is quite often on the floor. Hmm. Um, um, Have you learnt that you've gained conditions like anxiety or yes. anything because of yes. your illness? Yes, I can't look in the mirror now. <clears throat> yeah. So, which, you know, that's been going on for some time now. I just can't. Depression. But again, I mean, a lot of people have got that and it's due to lockdown. Mm. Um, I felt, uh, I'm kind of getting there now, but um, for a long time I was kind of grieving because I couldn't get out there oh, and do what I want to do. Yeah. yeah, you know. Comparing your old life to what you're like now yeah, as well. Yeah, can't yeah. do anything, you know. I keep saying to your dad, I want to go back up Snowden and he says the only way we're going up there is probably by train. Because he said you won't be able to walk it, and he's probably no. right. Yeah. But I sort of think, oh, for God's sake, you know, you just go back sort of 10, 15 yeah. years, and I didn't have a problem. I suppose the only way you can look at that now is, well, I okay, I it. can't do that now, but at least I have done that. Mm. Like, turning it around. Yeah, but it's it's very um, sort of well, what can I do then? Yeah. You know, I mean, even if the pools were open, the size I am at the moment, I wouldn't go swimming. No. Does Unless water they, help your condition? It would, definitely. Yeah. Swimming definitely yeah. helps, um, which is another reason why I like going on holiday, because you've got nice warm pools yeah. and warm seas, and I can go swimming. Yeah. And I do. So more I swim a lot. in the UK, then. Yes. Mm. Um, it, it really makes a difference yeah. and I don't think it's just because it helps with your arthritis but mentally it makes a difference yeah. because you feel like you're trying to do something 
And you're achieving something. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Mm. So, um, yeah, so if it was, uh, if I could lose some weight, then I could go swimming. Yeah. If the pools were open. Yeah. Or once the summer gets here, I'll just go in the sea. Yeah. Black sack on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless. <laughs> okay, that's all our questions. So, thank you very much for joining me today and doing a little question interview. Hopefully, we've helped other people sharing different ideas. And hopefully, I've not depressed and, them all too much. And that, <laughs> but also showing more awareness of different conditions that are out there. Well, yeah, I'm sure there's lots of people out there saying, oh, I've got that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. what have I got to look forward to then? Not a lot. <laughs> End it all now. <laughs> It'll be alright. <laughs> okay, so thank you for watching Royal Royal's Ventures. Thank you to Mandy Duffin for joining us. And we'll see you all again soon. Bye. Bye. Yay.